Liners New and Old continues the theme from my A to Z of ocean liners and cruise ships and the Bon Voyage series. I'm always on the lookout for old films to convert to DVD and film taken on video more recently. The idea is to build up a history of passenger ships and cruising ships since filming first began. In this volume there are 42 ships shown. Some are just short clips and other longer sequences. Some is in black and white but it's mostly in colour. The ships are shown in alphabetical order except for this delightful little ex-ferry sadness which is now a museum in Stavanger and occasionally takes passengers on cruises of the Norwegian fields. This forms the introduction. And so we start with the Alexander Moseski. Built as Patria in 1919, this ship was sold to the Soviets in 1935. She served on the Pacific service and was broken up in 1979 in Hong Kong. This ship, the Americano Vespucci, doesn't really belong in a DVD about liners and cruise ships, but I felt I couldn't leave it out. We saw her when we were cruising in Braemar. She was originally launched as the Castelmari di Stabia. She's used by the Italian Navy for training cadets. Launched in 1927 as the Arandora for Blue Star London and their La Plata service, the ship was renamed Arandora Star in 1929 and refitted as a cruise ship. In 1939 she was converted again as a troop ship and she was sunk in 1940 with a loss of 761 souls, mostly POWs being taken to Canada. We see the crew here practicing lifeboat drill in much happier times when she was cruising before the war. Blenheim III. She was launched in 1970 for Fred Olson's London to Las Palmas run and cruising in the winter. She was built by the Upper Clyde shipbuilders and in 1981 Fred Olsen sold her and she became the Scandinavian Sea and then in 1984 Venus, 1986 Discovery and then after a fire she was scrapped in 1996. We have many scenes here taken around the deck when she was on one of her many cruises to the Canary Islands.
The decks seem pretty wet, and those passengers on deck are trying to catch what sun there remains before their arrival in the UK. Calcas 3 of Blue Funnel is one of many ships of this class. This ship was more or less destroyed by fire in 1973 and had to be towed to Kaohsiung to be broken up. Canton was built by Stephen of Glasgow for p and Southampton to Hong Kong run. In 1939 she was converted be an armed merchant cruiser, and then in 1944 she was converted again, this time to be a troop ship. She returned to service after the war and was broken up in Hong Kong in 1962. We will see the Cape Town Castle both in colour and in black and white. She was built for Union Castle by Harland and Wolfe as a motor vessel in 1938 for the Southampton to Cape Town run. In 1939 she became a troop ship and was returned to service in 1947. She served the Union Castle until 1967 when she was broken up in La Spezia. You see here some passengers buying lace goods from a trader who's come on board in Madeira. Elliman's City of York was built by Vickers Armstrong Newcastle and started on the route from London to Biera in 1953. In 1973 she was sold to a Greek company and renamed Mediterranean Sky. She capsized in 2003. Built by Stephen of Glasgow for P&O and launched in 1931 for the London and Hong Kong route, the Corfu is seen here at sea. In 1939 she became an armed merchant cruiser and then in 1944 a troop ship. After the war she had one funnel removed. She was broken up in Japan. And now we come to some more up-to-date film, the Costa Favelosa. This was taken in September 2014 by my colleague Mick Hymans. She's seen here in Malta as passengers come off the ship to join their excursion coaches. Costa Favelosa was built by Fincantieri in Italy. It's one of the Concordia class. Another more recent shot and also taken in September 2014. See here the Costa Mediterranea, built by Caverna Massa for the Costa Line, and she's seen here entering Bergen.
we get a lovely view of her hair, side on. She's preparing to turn around and to go into the berth stern first. You get a view of the helter-skelter going down into the swimming pool. This must be great fun for the children, but somehow it seems out of place to me. But then you might call me old-fashioned and out of date, and that I surely am. The three funneled Empress of Britain, built by Brown on Clydebank. She became a troop ship in 1939 and was sunk in 1949. The Empress of Canada, built by Vickers Armstrong Newcastle for CPR and their Liverpool to Montreal run. You see her hair being pulled out by tugs from her berth in the inner harbour. She will be taken to the landing stage where the passengers will join her before she sails on her way to Montreal. There's some lovely shots here of this beautiful ship, which was later sold to Carnival in 1972 and served as the Mardi Gras. She had other names before she was scrapped in 2003. Olympic, Star of Texas, Lucky Star, and Apollon. Here she's seen being pulled into the lock, which separates the inner dock from the Mersey. Her passengers have joined her at the landing stage and the gangway will shortly be removed and she can start on her voyage.
I couldn't resist putting this little cargo refrigeration ship Jamaica producer in. She was built by Lithgow and Glasgow. She was damaged in the war by U-590 but survived. Here's another survivor, but not a war survivor. She survived a long time in service. The Marco Polo was built as the Alexander Pushkin. In 1991, she became Marco Polo and cruised for maritime voyages. She was built by Matthias Thiessen Yard in Wismar, East Germany. We see her here on a very dull, grey and misty day, leaving in the Gordon. We now have some interesting pictures of Matson Lines Mariposa, built by Bethlehem S.B. She started life in 1932 on the San Francisco to Sydney run. In 1941 she entered U.S. Navy service as a transport and was laid up in 1946 and sold then to the home line and renamed Homeric. She's seen here with American flags on her side, which suggests these pictures were taken between late 1939 and late 1941. Mein Shift I had an earlier life. She was built by Mayor Weft as Galaxy, and then as Celebrity Galaxy, and it wasn't until 2011 that she became Mine Shift One. She is also seen leaving in the Gordon on that misty and murky morning. She's owned and operated by TUI Cruises. You'll see that on the funnel. It's the same company that operate Thompson Holidays in the UK. We now come to the third Midnight Sol, Midnight Sol 3, operated by Herta Gruten. She was built by Fossen, Norway. She carries 45 cars and a thousand passengers. We see her here in Christensund. Apart from other cruising, Hertig Gruten concentrate on cruising up the Norwegian coast, in and out of the fjords. They still bring post and cargo, and call in at some of the more remote villages and towns tucked up in the, these fjords. They don't always stay very long when they berth. Passengers can get off and stay for a few days in a hotel or a lodge and then catch one of the other ships and continue their journey. My wife and I watched and filmed from a small ferry as we went around Christensen. We'd come off Saga Sapphire and you'll see in a minute Midnight Sal passing Saga Sapphire on her way out. We took these films on our cruise in September 2014 and we were exceptionally lucky with the weather. It's very mild and sunny most of the time and the sea was as calm as calm could be.
a visitor to Fowey in the summer of 2014 was the National Geographic Explorer. She was launched as a lynchin. She then became the midnight soul of uh, her Gruten lines and then back to the lynchin again in 2007. Her builder was Alstein Veth, A.S. Norway. She was also called Midnight Soul 3 at one stage and Midnight Soul 2. Sometimes I wish they'd make up their minds. Anyway, here she is, approaching Fowey in very calm waters. And because she's quite small, she's able to go in without turning. Now we see National Geographic Explorer moored in Fowey and the passengers will be able to go ashore by launch. And now, another Hurtigruten ship, the Nordcap. She came in to Flora when we were there. I was not quick enough to see her coming in, and I regret that although I filmed her going out, I seem to wipe that film off. Nevertheless, we got some good pictures of the side of her. She was built by Kavana Leven in Norway. She takes 45 cars and 622 passengers. The Hurt Gruten ships are now built as cruise ships and have all that cruise ship passengers might expect. And so to our last Hurt Gruten ship. Here we see the Nordlus. She's coming in to Bergen. The Nordlus takes 622 passengers and 45 cars and some of her passengers will take their cars and drive off in some port up on the western coast of Norway. Maybe drive on to yet another port further up or further down and join the ship again. I love this little replica steamer, which is now a tourist ship in the foreground, having completed its tour, coming back to its berth. It may not be a replica for all I know.
So now we go back over 50 years to the Orient Steamship Company liner or server. She was built by Vickers Armstrong in Barrow in 1954. And she served on the London to Sydney route. She became a P&O liner in 1966 and was painted white. I had the privilege of serving in Orsova in 1958 and that was just for one voyage in between ships and this time we went through the Panama Canal out to Sydney Australia and then did a Pacific voyage before returning to London Bar Suez. We get a quick glimpse of the Pan America of the US shipping board Baltimore she was renamed Hunter Liggett in 1939 and used as a Navy transport and scrapped in 1948. Built by Penhoen of Saint Nazaire, the Paris was laid down in 1913 but not launched until 1916 because of the Great War. Even then she was laid up until 1921. She had a big fire in 1929 but was repaired but then was destroyed by fire in April 1939. Again, because of the war, she wasn't scrapped until 1947. We've seen the Prince and Dam before in earlier editions of Bon Voyage, but now we get a chance of a close-up look at her. She's moving towards the entrance of Fowey in Cornwall. Printon Dam started life as the Royal Viking Sun for Cunard. In 1999, she became the Seaborne Sun, and it wasn't until 2002 that she became the Printon Dam. She was built by Watsila in Finland. Two togs appear and they will turn her around and then tow her backwards into Fowey Harbour. We can now view her from all sides as she's turned around slowly.
safely anchored in the harbour. Boats are lowered to take those passengers who wish to go ashore. Several of the tours on offer will be to gardens, including the Lost Gardens of Halligan and the Eden Project. QE2 in New York as she prepares for a Caribbean cruise. She was built by Brown on Clydebank and launched in 1967, but her acceptance trials didn't go well and it wasn't until May 1969 that the QE2 entered service on the Southampton to New York run. She was built to maintain this Atlantic route, but also to undertake a number of cruises, and towards the end of her life, the cruising became predominant. Here we see the passengers gathered for the Commodore's reception. On this cruise, Commodore Warwick, the first captain of QE2, was the host. And you'll see him giving a good imitation of Groucho Marx. I think this was one of his party tricks. A good few years later, his son, Ron Warwick, would become the captain of the QE2, and he too would later be Commodore. Here we see QE2 anchored and the passengers will go ashore by boat. QE2 had a long life, and it wasn't until November 2008 that she was handed over, originally to be birthed in Dubai. Various schemes were put forward for her use, including being a hotel in South Africa. She remained in Dubai, and in 2011 drifted in a sandstorm. At the time of making this film, 2014, she is still in Dubai and her future is uncertain. Queen Victoria was the third of a trio of ships, the others being the Queen Mary and the Queen Elizabeth. Queen Victoria was built by Vincantieri and did her maiden voyage in 2007. She's seen here leaving in the Gordon. The mist has cleared somewhat and we get some good pictures of her as she pulls out of the harbour.
These pictures were taken by Richard Clack, who drove down from Dunnet Head to Invergordon on that day, not knowing, because of the weather, whether he'd be able to film the ships or not. And I'm so glad that he did. Once clear of the harbour, Queen Victoria can begin to put on speed. And now we go to Dunnet Head. And here are two of Richard Clack's offerings from the 2014 cruise season around Great Britain. The first of these is the Saga Pearl II. She was built in 1981 as the Astor. Then in 85, she became the Ankara, and in 2002, Saga Pearl II, her current name, but for a while she was Quest for Adventure before returning to that name, Saga Pearl II. Her builders were Howald Zack, Deutsche West. The second of Saga's ships to pass Dunnet Head this summer was Saga Sapphire, which is seen here passing the lighthouse. Saga Sapphire started life as the Europa in 1981. She then became in 1999 Superstar Europa, and in the same year, Superstar Ares. In 2004 she was named Holiday Dream and in 2008 Bleu de France. Her builder was Bremer Vulcan. Now we go to Christiansen in Norway. My wife and I enjoyed a wonderful cruise on Saga Sapphire. We were picked up by a chauffeur-driven car from our home in Tunbridge in Kent and driven to Dover. We sailed that day. Passing the white cliffs of Dover, we were buzzed by a spitfire. A very enjoyable experience, much more enjoyable than some Luftwaffe pilots might have experienced a few years earlier. 
we were to cruise some of the ports on the west coast of Norway. And here we are in Christensen, being passed by the Midnight Sal as she sailed. We saw pictures of this earlier. My wife and I have done a lot of cruising since 2000, nearly 30. And this must count as one of the most enjoyable. Saga really looked after us. Santa Maria made her maiden voyage in 1953 on the Lisbon to Buenos Aires route. A few shots of her here in Madeira. Fifty odd years later we find the serenade of the seas in Malta. She was built by Mayor Weft in Germany and takes nearly 2,500 passengers and 900 crew. According to the literature, she's sponsored by Whoopi Goldberg, whatever that means. The ship film collectors a very short shot of the troop ship Somersetshire. She was operated by the Bibby Line. The Stella Polaris started operating in 1927 as a Norwegian cruise ship. She was taken over by the German army in 1940 until 1945. She was returned after the war and rebuilt. In 1952, she went to Sweden as a clipper line. It was rebuilt again in 1954, 1965 and 1968. In 1969, she became the floating restaurant Scandinavia in Japan. In 2005, she was bought again, this time by Swedish interests, and after a refit was towed towards Europe, but she sank under tow in southeastern Japanese waters. There are unconfirmed plans to raise her from the ocean floor. Strathaird was built by Vickers Armstrong in Barrow for p and in 1932 she made her maiden voyage from London to Sydney. In 1939 she became a troop ship and was released in 1946 when two funnels were removed. She was scrapped in Hong Kong in 1961. Strathmore was also built in Barrow and Furness for p by Vickers Armstrong. She made her first voyage cruising in 1935 and then she was put onto the London to Sydney route. In 1939 she became a troop ship and she wasn't returned to passenger service until 1949. She then enjoyed a long and happy career going backwards and forwards to Australia with the occasional cruise thrown in. She was sold to Greek interest in 1963 and renamed Marietta Letzi and used as a pilgrim ship until 1966 when she was renamed Henrietta Letzi before being scrapped in La Spezia.
The Blue Star ship Sultan Star was completed in 1930. She was sunk by a U-boat in February 1940. She was a refrigerated cargo and passenger ship. And now we come to Thompson Spirit. She's seen here at a distance entering Bergen. She was built by Chantiers d'Atlantique in 1983 as the new Amsterdam. She served Holland America 17 years as New Amsterdam, and then in 2000 she became the Patriot. She returned to the name New Amsterdam in 2002, and later that year to Royal Majesty. From 2009 until 2012 she was the Louis Majesty, and then she became the Thompson Spirit. We get a very good view of her here as she approaches her birth in Bergen. And our last shots of her are as she prepares to sail later that evening. The Venus was built in 1931 for the Bergen to Newcastle route. She was taken over by the Germans during the war and was sunk by Allied bombers in 1945. She was refloated in 1948 and had another 20 years of service. We get a very quick shot of the Lambert and Holt Voltaire. Her maiden voyage was in 1923. In 1939 she became an armed merchant cruiser being sunk in 1941. We now come to another Blue Star cargo refrigerated liner. The Wellington Star, seen here entering Curacao, was built in 1952 by John Brown at Clydebank. In 1975, she was sold to the Broad-based Shipping Company and converted into a livestock carrier and renamed Hawke's Bay. She was scrapped in Kaohsiung in 1979. You see the floating pathway closing behind her as she enters the harbour. William Royce was laid down in 1939 and not launched until 1946. She was built by the Shelder Holland. Her maiden voyage was in 1947 from Rotterdam to New York. She was rebuilt in 1958 for the route through Panama to Australia. She was sold to Loro in 1965 and converted to a cruise ship and named Achille Loro. She sank in 1994 off Somalia. And so we come to our last liner in this part, the Winchester Castle. Built by Harland and Wolfe, she made her maiden voyage in 1930 from Southampton to Cape Town. In 1938, she was rebuilt with one funnel removed. In 1940, she was a troop ship. In 1947, she entered emigrant service. And then in 1948, she was overhauled and she was back on the Southampton to Cape Town route until she was broken up in 1960. That brings us to the end of Liner's New and Old, Volume 1.
I do hope you've enjoyed it.